the hard drive is rolling, Facebook Live is rolling. I have a terrible feeling that I put the last show out on 100 watts in a wire because I, I never saw it show up on, on my, uh, face, my Facebook, my, uh, uh, yeah, Facebook feed. And, uh, and then when I, when I set up for this one, it had 100 watts in a wire in it. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> and I'm trying to make it... Oh, let's see. I need to see discussion. Wow, that was cool. So, yep. That's okay, we are... <laughs> We are live, and I'm going to share it <clears throat> onto my wall, where there are thousands of hams who are my very good friends, and onto the That's Ham Radio Now page. And there we go. Cool. And cool. that, see, so you're getting the idea of what this awesome. show is. It's. Uh, it's the why. It's the why hell show. This is Ham Radio now, the most important amateur radio program on the internet. I keep forgetting to say that. And uh, this is the why hell show. I am. Is this me? Yeah, I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. Ham Radio now is brought to you by you. It is free to. No, that's not the right one. Free to watch. Yes, free to watch, not free to make. I keep saying free to make, not free to watch. <laughs> Just the opposite. So I've got a bunch of ladies here in the booth with me. Um, and the only way I can get women in the booth with me is to tell them I'm going to put them on TV. So, yeah. And sitting next to me is uh, Dawn, W-A-4-Y-L. Hey, Dawn. Good to see you here. And climb up close on that microphone. And then uh, sitting across from me is Catherine on the left, on screen left, yes, uh, A-C-4-Y-L. And Melanie A G four Y L and photo bombing you in the background is who? N one P Z P. K one P Z P. N one. N one P Z P. Okay, photo bombing from the background. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, I think we're going to talk about Y L stuff. There seems to be a theme here, but I also I, I also never want to make it seem like if you're going to talk to women, you're only going to talk about women's stuff because you're all hands. You play ham radio, I, I, and from looking at your Facebook pages, you play ham radio pretty hard. And you and you just got done with a forum. What's the audience mix in the forum? Mostly, mostly women. Did some men show up? Well, actually, this year, um, yeah, we had probably our largest group uh, that we've had thus far at a forum, um, and it was a nice mix of OMs and YLs, which is very common. Um, we do get some OMs that attend the YL forum, which is good because uh, uh, they're there to support YLs in general as well as perhaps their significant other that they brought with them to encourage them uh, in getting more involved in amateur radio. So it was a very good mix. Okay, so, and I forgot to turn on the camera for you. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Um, you can leave that one off. Uh, the, well, <laughs> this, this is live, so there's no editing. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, just everything we do goes goes to, goes to the entire world. Uh, right now, I can't tell if anybody's watching on Facebook right now or not. Yeah, I can't. Doesn't show anybody. We're, no one is watching us. Not even me. <laughs> but they will. We'll, we'll gather an audience. So when I was thinking of um, what we would get out of a show like this is a combination of encouraging women to get into ham radio and for, for women that are already in ham radio, um, helping them feel more comfortable in a very male-dominated world and have more fun. And that's what your forum said, how to, you know, how to have fun. So I think that as we talk about those things, we can probably also talk about the regular ham radio stuff that you guys do. I imagine that will all mix right in. So what should, what should we start with? Well, that's one of the things that we like to focus on uh, in the forum is the idea is that we don't want to separate. We're not intended on having uh, any kind of exclusion uh, to male amateur radio operators. The idea is, is that a couple of things. Women 
I have the question, and I did, and I think Catherine did, uh, is there a place for me in ham radio you know, as a woman? And uh, the other thing is, is men often have a jump start in amateur radio. It's a male-dominated field. And uh, they also um, often have more mentorship in technology fields and radio. And so the... Um, they have a, they start often with a grounding that women don't get and just to kind of level the playing field and have them come in and be um, be able to play on even ground have both uh, uh, amateur radio operators be amateur radio operators and play radio and have a good time male or female how long have um, all of you been Licensed hands. Catherine first. Uh, I got my technician license in September of 2013, so uh, almost five years this year. Okay. Nolly? And I got my, uh, I'm a double play. I got my technician and my general in uh, December of 2014. So uh, not, uh, I think she's got about a year on me or so. Okay. And, and you're both extras now? Yes, yes. that's correct. Yeah. And Don? I've been a ham since November of 2010, and I went from technician to general within six months, and then I waited a few years and went to extra, and I've been here at Hamcation, and this marks my eighth year here, and I so also... So you came to Hamcation your very first year. Yes. And, and, that, and at eight years, she's the old lady of the group. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I gotta be yeah, let's roll with that. I, I guess good. I gotta be careful, you know, because you know, <laughs> what what can I say that's offensive or not? Let's go with the more experienced ham of the group. <laughs> <laughs> right there, we go. Okay. When I, when I went by your forum to ask you guys to come over to the uh, to the show, there was a young lady sitting in the back row, and I started talking to her. Yet she was hollering to somebody else that says, "This is the place to go to pick up chicks." <laughs> and, and I was going to say, I was going to use that line, and I thought it would be terribly offensive. And I don't know, maybe it is. Well, but, it depends on if it's coming from a, a YL or an OM. Yeah, it depends on who's, <laughs> who's saying it. Okay. Um, there, a lot of women who get into ham radio do it because their husband or boyfriend or somebody, some you know, some male in, the, in, in their orbit became a ham. And uh, so they get their ham license, but they never get on the air. True. You know, they may come to a ham fest or a club meeting or something and just kind of trail along, but they, they don't participate. So how do we how do we turn that around? Catherine? Well, we uh, we get that question a lot, um, and so one of the one of the things is that you know to realize that if somebody's going to become a ham radio operator, they have to want to. There has to be a desire there if you really want them to be active. They have to want to become a ham. So how do you establish that? How do you introduce them to amateur radio? Uh, we kind of have an idea of what not to do, like you know, push them, drag them to events where they don't want to go, have them do things that they don't, you know, they don't want to do uh, that are ham related. So you don't want to force your YL in your life to uh, to come to a ham event if they don't want to. However, uh, you want to not be afraid to extend that invitation either and help them find a place to find something interesting at that event. Um, you know, engage them in different activities and show them uh, different things as you go around and, and help them find their interest, what interests them in amateur radio. Is it, do they, are they a competitive person? Uh, then maybe contesting is for them and they like to do that. They like to challenge uh, themselves or, or you know, break through obstacles and learn how to, uh, to do contests. And contesting is a wonderful way to challenge yourself and be competitive, okay? Um, but yet others might have a more scientific uh, aspect and they like the electronics and, and that side of things. Well, you know, amateur radio has plenty of that available. Uh, so there's that. Uh, maybe they like some of the historical aspects of it. Well, CW Morse code brings in the history uh, of wireless operating, and it's still being done today. So maybe they'll enjoy visiting the telegraph booth and seeing that setup and that layout. 
Uh, maybe they enjoy the more social aspect. Take them to forums and help them meet other hams. Uh, so y you want to help them find what interests them. In, in that way, it's really no different than any ham because there's such a wide variety of things to do, uh, male or female. I, th it's, I think the, 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 the thing I'm getting here is let them do their thing, not do the OM's thing. Right, and help them find what that thing is. They don't know, they may not have a clue what amateur radio is. And so if you have a more welcoming and inviting uh, element to your presentation of it to them or introducing them to it instead of, well, I'm going to Hamfest, so you're going with me and we're going together, it, it needs to be more uh, open and inviting and friendly. Um, so, so more like there's a ham fest coming up in a couple of weekends and I'd like to go. Would you like to come with me? Or I'd love for you to come with me so that you can see what I enjoy doing and experience it for yourself. Um, a, lot of, a lot of why else we talk to at the forums to find out how they got interested or what really got them fired up. A lot of them are introduced by their OMs, but what was it that got them to, to get active and have fun? And a lot of the answers we get is they got on the go to station at field day. Field day. <laughs> they experienced it for themselves, and that struck their interest and, and passion for amateur radio. All right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I'll just take that one step farther. Is uh, and that's what I was going to say. Field day. If you can find, if you have an interactive club or a neighboring club that that does a really good field day. <clears throat> Excuse me. That offers different modes and different opportunities, and a go-to station and mentorship. And sometimes it takes uh, it takes a little bit of searching out. You know, I I went through two clubs to find the fit. So it's just finding people that welcome you and make you feel welcome to it. So let's find out how each of you got interested in uh, in ham radio, whether it was through someone else in the family or whether you did it on your own. Don, did you start on your own? Yes, I did. Uh, it all started when I went to a Hurricane Expo and I got information from the from Steve Jersey, Jervy, our uh, local newscaster for the weather, and he told me about Skywarn and I joined Skywarn first and it was hosted by a amateur radio club and I wrote a letter on email and I got invited to my local radio club in my area and then I took the test failed it once and then I got it the second time around and um, it all so, started from the from uh, sky one so is that a, a um, MCOM all the way around or, or purely weather and sky one Weather in Sky One. I also belong to Aries Races. And so, so you got an MCOM interest. Yes, and I was inspired by the movie Twister to do <laughs> that. Did they have any ham radio in the movie Twister? No, CB. And um, I like the uh, storm chasing aspect of it, which made me want to do Sky One, and I'm a Sky One spotter, and I run my local nets. For Sky One. Okay, so you jumped in both feet in, uh, and you know, became deck control. Yeah. Did you get like an EC or assisted EC position or something like that? No. No, just through my uh, local radio club that Stand I belong close to. to the mic for you. Just, just, um, <laughs> just uh, through my radio club. And I've uh, also run other nets for my club. And it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. And it's very rewarding, and I've talked to people in 98 countries. Almost DXCC. Almost. Almost. So, yeah. you, and you, I think you said you had a boyfriend who was a ham? Yes, and I met him I met him on two meters. Oh. He is... Because <laughs> he lives about 35 miles from me, and we hit it off, and we, we ran into each other here at the Ham Fest on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. There, now there's the thing. This, this is the Orlando Ham Fest, and it floats around Valentine's Day, and sometimes lands right on it. A couple of, couple of uh, years ago, I think uh, Saturday was on Valentine's Day, and so I was going through the line of people waiting to get in and asking all the women, "A Ham Fest for Valentine's Day, really?" <laughs> and, and the answers were all over the map. It was a uh, yeah, we're, that's you know that's what I wanted to do. It was, yeah. it was the big thing. Um, so, Catherine, uh, 
well, first of all, back to Dawn. So your your uh, your interest um, was not based on the boyfriend. How about father, mother, nope. any other friends? It totally came out of the blue for you. No, nope. I, I did it all on my own. I'm the only ham radio person in my family. And right now my niece is studying her technician, and I'm hoping she does it and doesn't get cold feet. Who, who was your connection? Did, who, did, who did you meet that gave you a personal introduction to ham radio? Steve Jervy from NBC News on Channel 8 in Tampa. And then I, that letter I wrote, and somebody in the club invited me to come to one of the meetings, and I did. Did they treat you like... Um you're walking into somebody with like one eye, that, you know, just a total aberration. A, a, a young woman on your own, not coming in with a husband, boyfriend, or you know, father. Oh, I was I was well with open arms, and uh, when I got my first license, I got on the radio with an HT. I started out with an HT that one of my friends gave me, and then after that, somebody on my local repeater sent me a. Yezu 2800 and I had a bag mount on a cookie sheet and then it grew from there <laughs> Outstanding Alright, uh, so Catherine, what's, uh, what's your story? Well, it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting one <clears throat> Excuse me We'll be the judge of that uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, let me put it this way uh, Unusual one um, So, I actually rented a program on Netflix uh, called Wish Me Luck. It's a British mini television series uh, put out by Acorn Media, and uh, it was about British women agents uh, that uh, went out uh, and uh, traveled to occupied Europe. And in this particular mini series, it was occupied France during World War II. And uh, what inspired me was uh, these women were trained as wireless operators and were included. They did other training as well, obviously, because they're going into occupied territory, so they had to learn a lot of the different things. But the part that I thought was most interesting is you got to see the radio that they used, and they were very accurate in the series. They did a lot of research for it. And uh, the radios that they used would be uh, put in small suitcases. And so you would see uh, a woman out uh, out there. A spy radio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's really neat because it all fit in this. It all fit in this small suitcase. It's like a brown leather suitcase, and uh, there were there were scenes throughout this series where she would be one one scene was in a boarding house. She had just gone in, you know, signed in, went up to her room on the second floor pulled out her radio, the first thing she needs to do is establish communication with Britain and let them know the team arrived, et cetera, et cetera. So she pulls out the suitcase and opens it up and there's a radio inside and she pulls out her key and her small headset. And now, did they even get to the part about an antenna? Because these yes. are HF radios. So you yes. Need an antenna, and that's not yes. Easy. You actually see her run the wire down on the room right. and go lean out the window and swing it up <laughs> over the roof so that she can establish communication. It was It's very well done. And I thought, what is she? This is cool. And what's the name of that series? It's called Wish Me Luck. Because I think any, any ham would be interested yes, to see it. Yes, it is a fantastic, it's a fantastic series. Uh, and uh, again, it's, it's put out by Acorn Media if you can't, you know, you don't do Netflix or anything. It's called Wish Me Luck. And it's, it's a, the focus is women during that, uh, that time period, although they you know, have other folks there. But you do see a variety of, of uh, scenes involving wireless operating, uh, including the training. Um, where they actually have some women that are learning, uh, and in fact, one of the uh, uh, top people in that that are running the outfit in the series, uh, which is based on Special Operations Executive, which is the group there that that were sending these women and men there, um, was a woman. So it was really it was really neat uh, to see those those things, and it's based on real real events. Now, was it a is a documentary or was it a drama? No, it's a drama. So there's you know fictional characters, uh, but they're based on factual events. So okay, so you saw that, mm-hmm. and so I saw that, and I thought, well, how the heck does Britain talk to France? You know how 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 does Britain talk to France? Uh, you know, using a wire. What what is that? You know, what is she doing, and how does that work? Okay, so that m- magic of radio things. Yes, kicking. yes, that was the trigger for me. Um, I, I don't have any family members that are hams. Um, in fact, the closest I had was my grandfather. It was a CB operator, 
um, and that. But I never That's saw. How I got him, yeah, I never saw him operate. I, you know, I had no exposure to amateur radio uh, until I saw that series and thought that's really cool. So, how did you translate that into learning about? Oh, by the way, Melanie, if if I put up the wrong title, which I put up Don title for a minute, and you and you kind of catch my, just say idiot, you got the wrong title up. This, that's the kind of show we're doing here. Maybe she wants to be Don. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm not going to judge. That's okay. okay. We can change the names to you know yeah. protect the innocent. <laughs> okay. So so yeah. how? How did you go from from that, watching that movie to learning about what ham radio was? Well, um, I did some research and found uh, ARRL's website. Um, I had a, a family friend that was a ham um, that uh, that I didn't really know up until that point. That kind of took, sent me to that website. How far before you got your license? was this oh within a year okay so you, you moved it fast. was like that summer and i was like this is cool and in september i took my technician class you wasted no time no i i thought it was neat and i wanted to jump in um uh, i thought you know radios are cool i mean it's it's just i don't know what it is that kind of triggers in my brain for that but i just think it's really neat to communicate and you don't really see lines you know running a, a wire running from one end to the other to communicate so i yeah. just think that's fascinating so it's the magic of amateur radio now had you been technical um in any other aspect of your life yes yes i was a help desk engineer and i always enjoyed computers uh, even from a young age my father was on the on help desk for a pharmaceutical company uh, and uh, so he had brought, I remember our first machine we had, I don't remember what type it was, I just remember it was a small IBM that his work was throwing out. It was a single box unit with the keyboard built in and the screen about that big. Um, and that was the first unit he brought home that they were going to throw out. Uh, that was our first computer at home, you know, before you had personal computers per se. And then, uh, you know, I always had a, a technical interest. I always loved to play on the computer and figure out how to do things and play games and, and all that fun stuff. So I kind of grew up with computers because, <laughs> you know, things were just coming out. Windows, DOS was just moving into Windows 3.1, and you could go in the Sam's Club, and everybody was playing solitaire, right? I mean, that was the thing that you did. So, you know, uh, I had a computer interest, so that's uh, my technical background there. All right, and, and Don, I was going to ask you what... Uh where, where did your ham radio interest, uh, was it connected to anything else in your life? Were you interested in other technology, or did ham radio come out of the blue? Came out of the, came out of the blue mostly from the Skywarn class, and I really liked it. I always listened to uh, FM radio growing up, and I always wondered how these people got on the air, and then I found out about ham radio when I, in May of 2010. Got my ticket in November of that year. Now uh, I, I absolutely can't tell how old you are. Uh, you look like a, you know, early twenties to me. So um, say thank you, Don. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And, all right. Where where do you work, or what do you do in the, in the rest of life? Well, I I don't work um, right now, but I did work in the past. Was a driver for a mental health facility. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so your your experience has been non-technical in ham radio, right? Was was uh, just you know communications is cool. Yes, and I always enjoyed talking, and nobody really taught me anything about amateur radio. It just happened, and through Sky One and going to the radio club that was hosting the Sky One class, and I found out about it through the local clubs and. I really enjoyed what I was seeing, and I decided to study for the test, and that, that's... Okay. So, so Dawn's experience was that she uh, got introduced to the local club and, and was welcomed there, and, that, and she met you know, real human hams. Um, so, um, Catherine, what, what was your connection to real hams once you went through the websites and saw well, that it existed? I I found a local club um, that met real close to where I lived at the time. Um, they met at a, at a fire station about 10 minutes from where I was living. And uh, they had meetings, but I didn't go to a meeting. I actually just went and took the test first. Um, you know, so I was a little bit nervous. I, I knew nothing. I mean, I was just, this is cool. I want to learn about this. So I 
you know, went in and, and I studied. I used eham.net to study for my technician and my general class. Extra, I had to have a little extra study material for that. But um, I went in and uh, took my test with them, and then they invited uh, me to their next meeting. So I went to their next meeting, and uh, that particular uh, club was smaller, and it was more geared toward the Aries uh, side of things. And that wasn't really my interest yet. I didn't know about that. I thought, well, that's kind of neat, but that wasn't really my catalyst for amateur radio and my interest in it. So um, I looked for some, maybe some other clubs that, that were near me to see what, uh, well, there's one, there's got to be more than one. So uh, I found another one that also met uh, close by. Now, let me back up a second. The first club, while small and an Aries focus, was full of some very nice folks and inviting and encouraging people. In fact, they're the ones that were telling me about an HT, uh, the inexpensive model HTs that I could get to get started. And, you know, they the first piece of advice they're going to give you is don't use the built-in antenna. Get you a mag mount so that you can actually communicate using it when you're in your car or your vehicle. So now you're actually learning about this radio thing you were yes, fascinated yes. with. Yes, yes. So they gave me a, you know, just a very basic, invited me to a meeting. And so they were very supportive. So uh, that was great. Uh, but again, their focus was different from my interests. So I found another local club, uh, much larger, the North Fulton Amateur Radio League, which has uh, a little over 300 members. So it was a very large club, a uh, very active club. And people doing all kinds of things. Yes, all kinds of things. And so um, I went to a couple of club meetings, and one of the members invited me to his home uh, during a contest weekend. And he has several antennas in his backyard and some very nice equipment. And so I went out and got to, uh, to hang out with um, a ham that was sitting there operating and making contacts in quick succession with... And now you're you know, seeing that wire. Yes, I'm seeing the wire, but I'm also seeing someone using voice now talking to countries all over the world in quick succession. And I bit the contest bug. I said, I love this. I, I, when can I put the headset on and, and let's rock this? So was, uh, as, as a woman you know, walking in the unicorn into a situation like that, how were you uh, greeted and, and uh, accepted or not? Oh, uh, again, both clubs were very welcoming. While North Fulton is predominantly male, even the large uh, size of it, there are quite a few YLs there. Um, they weren't ex as active at the time, so uh, but the, but the OMs were very kind and inviting and encouraging. And any questions that I ha had, they were willing to help answer um, on I on anything, on antennas, on on uh, Morse code operating, on radios. In fact, they helped me borrow a radio from the club. They helped me design an antenna and actually encouraged me to participate in getting the antenna up, uh, doing some soldering and splicing some wire and the, and, and the design of the antenna. Uh, so they were very involving at whatever level I wanted to be involved at. So if I asked deeper questions, they would engage those questions and help me understand what I wanted to learn. And it was, it was a wonderful experience, and I'm still a member of that club. So there's a term going around these days, um, mansplaining. Familiar with mansplaining? Yeah, okay. Did you get much of that? I got some of it. Because uh, I don't think we can help ourselves. Yeah, I, I did get some. I but mean, well, we didn't know what it was for a long time. Yeah, but it, but again, all I had to do, I'm not, I'll ask if I don't understand something that, you know, someone explains. Not all women do. Sometimes we just go, oh, okay, I have no idea what he just said. <laughs> But Smile, okay. smile and, and and then you know and but you don't want to give up when that happens and I think some do unfortunately so don't give up if you have an interest in that to all the all the women out there you know you don't give up because uh, you know if you have an interest then go after it but no the the group was very nice and again I could always ask questions I felt comfortable asking questions and I think for a lot of the OMs that ask you know how do I get more women interested is you know. Make sure that they know you're willing to help them with questions that they may have and encourage them to ask those questions because sometimes we don't always ask. All right. Your turn, uh, Melanie. Where did, uh, where did your interest uh, get started and uh, was it, you know, was there family involved or come out of the blue? 
There was family involved, and uh, my start in amateur radio. Um, it's it, it's interesting. My father was a ham. My mother was also licensed, although she wasn't actively licensed. Okay, and, so now uh, I'm getting to the more traditional. Yeah, way you're getting to the it. more traditional in a sense, and and in a minute it's going to hit the brick wall and, okay. and change up very rapidly. Uh, my father became a silent key in 1972. My mom sold all the equipment and. Uh, you know, even though she was licensed, she wasn't active. My dad was the active ham. Yeah. And uh, and you weren't a ham at that point yet. In no, I, that was long before. I was, um, you know, I was I was pretty young, and that was kind of you know my dad's thing that he did. And while um, he was encouraging in letting me uh, find out things about electronics and kind of find my own way and hang out down there with him, uh, because he was involved in a lot of other aspects besides ham radio and he was involved in electronics and in um, building circuits and designing things and uh, he was a, a true hobbyist uh, he was also involved in um, RC radio control airplanes and I was uh, I was only seven when he died so we were just kind of and, and he was sick before that uh, I was kind of um, and we were kind of developing that relationship um, to where I was included in the things that he did when he uh, when he became ill and then uh, uh, later passed away, so it sort of hit a brick wall after that and um, didn't have any other family members uh, at the time uh, to uh, to help me or to really mentor me. My mom was off doing her, whole, her own thing. All of a sudden, she had to support a household, and uh, like I said, the equipment was gone. The people that hung out with my dad, you know, it's it's they all eventually disappeared because it was just my mother and myself, and we went on with our lives. Um, I became an adult. I was still interested. I would hang out downstairs uh, when I was a kid uh, in his old hamshed and play with resistors and tra and transistors and teach myself about electronics and components and do all that kind of stuff. It was my little personal hobby, and I enjoyed. Um, you know, reading books on uh, on electronics and theory and things like that. But when I became an adult. I, w I would help uh, friends whose uh, electronics equipment might have a cold solder joint, or you know, they blew a resistor off a soundboard, and I would just dive right on in and and fix it and work it out. And I enjoyed doing that kind of thing. What my turning point was with amateur radio. But where did where did you start uh, accumulating the knowledge to be able to do that? Did Just over the day? years, when I was a kid, hanging out downstairs, trying to be closer to to you know my late dad, and. Uh, just okay, messing see, but about. After, after he had passed away, mm -hmm. you continued an interest in technology. Yeah, I just messed around and kind of did my own thing. It was play, it was playtime for me. Yeah. It was, wow, uh, you know, you can make everything at that time. It was the electronics age and the semiconductor age and all this. Uh, newer technology. I mean, we were still a long way away from surface mount technology, but we were in the transistor age. Tubes were being phased out. The transistors are in. It's all about the you know the board modular and uh, and I found that interesting. And again, I think it was a way to continue that relationship um, with a man I didn't have enough time with. But. Uh, Fast forwarding to the digital transition um, of, of television, of broadcast television in, in 2013, I think is when it really kind of got started here in the U.S. and on into 14. Um, I wanted to, I thought it'd be interesting to try to build my own antenna. Um, cheap ones just didn't do well, especially where I was. And with digital, unlike back in the old days when you could tune the rabbit ears and look through the snow, <laughs> Put a with bit digital. Of foil on it. Right. With digital, it's there, it's not. It's, it's go, no go. So I looked into making my own antennas, and I thought I could build a better one than these little cheap ones. And you look for antennas, and you find hams. And so my search brought up uh, ham sites, and, and, and went, wow, amateur radio is still alive, and I could still <laughs> exist. Like, there's yeah. still such a thing. So you remembered, you remembered the ham radio. Did oh, you? Yeah. Did, did your dad have you, you know, operate, talk on the radio, talk to people, things like that? Just no, never kind of involved sitting by his me. knee listening. I did listen, and I remember him, uh, you know, sending code. I remember him talking on the radio, but that that was kind of his time. It was his, you know, now we have man caves. 
Yeah. Uh, my mom sort of gave him that space to do that and sort of involved me in other things just so he could do his thing and have his space and have his time. And, uh, that, I mean, that's the only explanation I can come up with for why he wasn't the... As much as he loved ham radio and loved his electronics, he was very um, focused on what he did and what his hobbies were. And he wasn't the kind of going, hey, come on over here and let's do this. He wasn't a, a super social gregarious man. Well, He was a ham. He was a ham. And, and he was... He, he was, was me. Uh, <laughs> he was wonderful, but he didn't... Um, he didn't reach out to me at least at that time again he got sick and passed away uh, when we were starting to have a, a interaction yeah, of you, you were just starting to get people. old enough to, to yeah. have that kind of yeah. relationship with somebody yeah exactly so and it was devastating I'm sure it, it was devastating and um, but you um, you know you go through that and again I think that had a lot of bearing on my future is trying to uh, maintain that connection after his death and hang out in his old shack even though the radio equipment was long gone there was still a lot of electronic equipment hanging around and stuff I could play with and burn and you know uh, blow up and melt and, and that was fun but when I decided uh, to look into building and this is we're talking a span here of from 1972 to 2013, 2014. And growing up, I'd expect, yeah, you know, that ham radio would be kind of fun, but again, it was, to me, it was disappearing. And my mom was like, oh, learn the code and you can get your license. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, that's pretty much all I got. So fast forward to, you know, 2013, 2014, building TV antennas and, uh, thought hey ham radio there's there's hams there's sites they're doing things they're on the air let me look into this and see are there any women doing this or is this just still my dad's generation these are the old men on the radio kind of doing thing exclusion women were excluded from the hobby for the most part and um, I didn't see a whole lot and I did some searches and I found uh, this thing called a net for women. I found this net that Catherine had started. She started a, a net on a repeater. Unbeknownst to me, she lives you know 15 miles away from me. She's starting a net for women, and I find out about it, and it's on Echolink. And this is a way that I can. Wow. Okay. So I don't need a radio. Uh, all I need is a computer, a headset and a license I studied and took my test late in 2014 to get on to this net for <laughs> women to find out if I wanted to be a ham radio operator nice job Catherine <laughs> I thought the ROI was good on this my return on investment was 15 bucks okay doesn't mean I was going I, I was like ooh I'm going to be a ham radio operator it meant I could get a license so I could get on the net so that I could find out if I wanted to be a ham radio operator and that was that's kind of like my weird convoluted story in that it, it all came back around but it it took some time to figure out if there was a place for me in this hobby as a, as a woman did you discover there was? absolutely Apparently, because you're doing forums now, talking about that. Absolutely. So, uh, w what was surrounding that in your life? It sounds like you were, were involved in technology as a hobby. Were you involved in it as a business? No, not at all. I did it on the side. I just helped out friends, and I really didn't keep up on technology. I, uh, I did. Uh, you know, I was kind of in on the early days of computers, and but I wouldn't call myself a computer technician or guru. I never had a lot of money, so when something would break, I'm one of those people, I'll figure it out. I will figure out how to fix it. If I get a virus in my computer, I will somehow figure out a way to get rid of it because I have no choice here in the matter. And I think uh, uh, not being afraid to take on a challenge. My mother was that way. My mother was a, a big inspiration in that. I mean, 
uh, losing your husband and having to raise your daughter on your own and make it work and pay bills. And my mother's not a shrinking violet. She wasn't June Cleaver. This was a woman who had worked before she got married. And um, not that there's anything wrong with being a housewife or being June Cleaver. I want to offend anybody here. That's fine. Um, But it wasn't my mother. My mother worked before she met my father, and she was a a career woman, and she, you know, bought her own cars and paid her own bills and made her own way. It just happened that when she got married, my father was the one that brought paycheck home, and my mother took care of everything else, including the home, including me, including paying bills. My mother was not afraid of anything, though, and she wasn't afraid of figuring out something and tackling it. The house was hers. If there was a leak, it wasn't my dad that got up on the roof and fixed it. It was my mother. So I got a lot of strong bearing into problem solving and figuring out things. So I have an advantage, and that's part of what doing these forums she are. She passed that on to you. I have an advantage. Not all women had someone like my mother, and they don't know they're not necessarily going to drill down on the internet and find these answers and go do these things and you know get licensed just to find this and see if you can do that and go to it like I did so we try to remember that and keep that in mind and engage people and get all these different people with these different stories these different backgrounds and see if we can find out where their niche is in, in ham radio and to tell them, yes, there is a place for you in amateur radio as a female. So there's three different stories here. One distant family connection. Well, not distant, but not not right at your Removed. generation. Yeah, not, mm-hmm. not, I guess what I'm trying to say is not the husband. Right. And then two pretty much no ham radio family connections at all. The, the women that you meet in the forums, on the nets, the women that you are working with to become more active and have more fun, um, what's the mix there in, in the connections to, uh, to a husband who's a ham and they're just following along versus... Do you want this? Uh, how, how many do we have that uh, are like you guys that, that took the, your own bull by the horns? Well, well um, And you can mix it up. You don't have to... <laughs> <laughs> What we found when we started going to Hamfest and talking to women, um, there is a large contingency of women that got licensed because their husbands were licensed, their OMs were licensed, and that's why my mom got her license. And a large percentage of that segment who are not active, or they get on the repeater, or they... um, you know, they sit and they watch their husbands, kind of, or they support their husbands, and they have a license, but they're not active. There is a large percentage of that. As you stated at the beginning of the show, that is absolutely true. They get licensed because their OMs are hams, and uh, I guess they feel like uh, they, they can now walk into a ham fest and um, be just as just as unengaged maybe is the right word I'm, I'm, I'm searching here um, as if they didn't have a license it's not really making an impact on their life uh, then you have um, and, and maybe they don't want it to and maybe they don't want well here's the thing you know you were talking about different things in MCOM and you're talking about you know Catherine was talking about the different aspects of amateur radio the things you can find out about field day and of course um, mansplaining Men and women communicate differently, and it's it's not anyone's fault. Um, I explain this without really not getting into a weird area, but men and women just communicate differently. Men just, um, they're not women, so they don't understand necessarily how to do this. And I think mansplaining comes out with, they, they don't, no, they don't have tools. And you find this maybe with, with men that didn't grow up with a bunch of headstrong sisters, you know, female siblings. Um, usually the men that come up with a house full of women, they can, they can work it out better. They can explain things a little bit better. They can communicate a little bit better on, on that level. But as I stated in the beginning of the show, the idea is, is not to separate the men from the women, but to give the women 
equal footing and equal ground coming from other women that have already gone through it, done the work, done the footwork, come from diverse backgrounds. And we don't do all the talking at the forums. The women that are in the forums come up to us and we talk to them and we find out what their stories are and what they want and what they're looking for. And I want to get, you know, I want to do stuff. I just don't know how. I just don't know where to start. I just, it all seems like too much. It seems too complicated. It seems not that they're unintelligent, but again, it's that even ground thing. Men have a head start in technology. They have a head start. They have a buddy system. They have mentorship. They have other men that are going to show them, hey, this is what you do, and this is how you how you do it. Men don't have that same kind of mentorship or support system. Yeah, and you can have that among females in ham radio, but there just aren't nearly enough of you or as many of you to develop that in every community. There, you know, there's only a few of you in each place, and maybe not that many that are as... as uh, um, the internet is a wonderful thing. Well, okay, good. <laughs> how do you how do you leverage that? Well, we started by the the, the net that she started on a um, local Echolink equipped repeater for the Ham Radio Club. Um, you find bigger conferences. Where is that net? That is on Echolink on the Alara Conference, which is the Australian Amateur Radio <laughs> League. And the European YLs are much more radioactive, if you will. They're much more um, uh, aggressive. They're much more right out there on the forefront. The Australian women are not playing. They're right <laughs> up there with the boys. You know, my radio. They get their own stuff, their own rigs, their own gear, and they, they go for it. They have a, a, a different mentality than the women here in the United States and a different history. And the South African women, the same way. They are uh, fearless, and they will get out there. And by Is that a using, general culture thing or just a ham radio culture thing? I, I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that. I, I haven't had a lot of interaction um, other than the, the, the female hams from those areas to know whether or not that's, as you said, a general or a ham radio. Perhaps it'll thing. be a net topic. There sometime. we go. That might be a net topic, uh, cultural differences. But um, they already had a fantastic uh, Echolink conference that had bandwidth and it was able to handle more check ins with less dropouts than a repeater's Echolink node. And they graciously allowed us. They wanted people to use it. Women weren't using it. It's, it's uh, connected to the Adelaide reflector out in Australia. So this net goes all over the continent, and, um, or at least South Australia, all over the state uh, of South Australia. And they are much more active and much more into it. Somebody pays a lot of money for this bandwidth, and it wasn't being used. So they're like, use it, use it, use it. Now, this is advantageous. This is just fine. This, women will band together, especially in a male-dominated field from all over the world. Word just gets out. It just connects um, amazingly so sometimes. And the uh, getting that kind of uh, thing going on, doing a Facebook group for the Wild Opnet, getting that going uh, where we can share links and we can share items like that. Uh, exposure on things like this, on shows like this, getting out to Hamfest and doing things, getting women in their communities involved in doing things. One of the questions came up was an OM said, how do I get more YLs involved in my local club? How do I do this? What do I do? Uh, find the YLs that are in your club. Be aggressive. Go out and talk to everybody. Do everything. Make up a flyer. Have an event. Tell them about your field day. Anything you can. Pass out flyers. Have the women approach the women and say, hi, are you licensed? Do you use it? If not, do you want to be? Are you interested? Do you get any kind of kick out of this? Do you know the different things that you can do? Engaging. Finding out about it, being enthusiastic about the hobby and engaging in the hobby. And that's probably my time. <laughs> what about you, Catherine? You have anything to Catherine, add to all that? You started the net, right? <laughs> yes. How, how did how did that come about, and uh, how did you make that connection and decide that was a co contribution you could make? Well, what I noticed, and and I've seen this before because I I come from a more technical background, so 
uh, that in of itself uh, is also a male-dominated area, so to speak. So, um, you know, I was already kind of used to being one of the few women on the help desk or, you know, doing, doing that kind of work. And uh, so uh, when I got my license, um, I start out like a lot of us, we get our HTs and, and we get our mag mounts and we listen on drive-ins uh, into work and home from work. So that's what I was doing is I was listening to local repeaters going into work and coming home. Now I, I had that, that mic shyness uh, <laughs> at that point. I, I wasn't speaking, I was listening because uh, the whole world of call signs and and you know trying to learn those and and how do i id and how often am i supposed to say my call sign you learn those as you take the test but now you have to do it so you know learning it and book smart is different from you know street smart as they say and, and getting your feet in on the ground were there any other women operating those repeaters that you were listening to on drive time see there you go no there weren't um in fact uh i for a while for a few weeks i heard a group of the same oms on every morning very nice group um, uh, they you know did a lot of round robin every morning and they had good conversations and they knew each other and they chat on the way in and on the way home but what was great is uh, I got to get familiar with hearing you know call signs and, and learning how the, the QSO is supposed to be done uh, but I still hadn't gotten through the mic shyness and I didn't hear any other women either did, did that make a big difference that the would another woman in there have got prompted you to start a little bit sooner? Most likely, yes. I, that, that, that's how I would think for me, personally. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I eventually got up the nerve to key up that mic and uh, come back to a ham with my call sign when nobody else did. I figured, oh, you know, say maybe there's only the two of us, you know, out of sight, out of mind, right? That's a good way to do it. Somebody just, just is, is out there and uh, and you think, well, he's... He's identified. There's no one coming back. Here's my shot. I'm not going to be in the right. middle of a whole bunch of other people. Right. So it's less intimidating. It's me and an OM. We can chat back and forth, and I, I can get his call sign. I got that. You know, it was uh, it was Scott, KB4, KBS. I'm like, oh, repeat, KB and KB. I think I can memorize this one. But, you know, I think it's funny because a lot of us have our little notepads in the car with us when we first get our license, and we're trying to write and drive and write call signs and that way we don't sound like we don't know what we're doing um there's always that that fear factor there but uh but yeah i noticed there weren't a lot of women on but i would start going to club meetings and there were you know three to four women there at least on a regular basis so my question you never heard them on the air right my question was well why aren't i hearing them on the repeater and i thought well what were my challenges you know, maybe they have those same challenges. Maybe they're mic shy. Maybe they don't know how. Maybe they, you know, are intimidated or don't feel comfortable. So what can I do to help bridge that, to get them to enjoy ham radio as I'm enjoying ham radio? And uh, so I thought, well, let me let me see uh, if there are women anywhere else on, on the air. Uh, locally, I'm not hearing them. There's got to be more women that are active. So I did some internet research and I found uh, an HF net on Thursday evenings at 9 o'clock. And it was a YL HF net. And I thought, okay, this is cool. I borrowed a radio from the club. They helped me set up an antenna so I could get on the air and get on HF. And uh, I would get on and, and um, to this HF net and check in. Of course, again, I... For a couple weeks, I just listened, you know, because I wanted to see what the protocol is and how does this net work and, and what are the, what's the process and how they do it. Some kind of analytical and if I see a pattern, I can follow a pattern <laughs> and that's how my brain works. So I thought, okay, so here we have Ann WB1ARU kicking off the net out of Massachusetts and, and she says announces the start of the net. And uh, then there's Margaret, 87 and B in Washington State that would help relay. So we had an East Coast and a West Coast YL so they could help relay in other YLs. But what I noticed was a couple things. One, it's a check-in net. And check-in nets are good. You can come in, say hello, where you are, and what the weather's like. That was pretty much how that net worked. And I couldn't always hear too many either. 
you know, because you're on HF and yeah. it's all propagation dependent and, and so there's a lot of variables as to whether you can hear them or not. So I thought, well, what can I do to kind of mesh the two? Obviously, there are wilds that are active. They're getting on HF and they're doing a check-in net. I want more informa informative uh, things going on. I want to learn more and I want to help other women learn more also. So what can I do to do that? You wanted to be entertained? <laughs> I wanted to be... No, I, I wanted to learn more from other women, and I wanted to have that opportunity to do that for yeah, other women. What, what I mean by entertained is, is you wanted something that was more interesting than just... Right, chit-chat. Location I, and weather. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't consider myself very good at your, you know... I like to have a conversation, and I'm more into the deeper conversations, and I guess you could say philosophical stuff, for <laughs> lack of a better term. You know, the, the chit-chat I have a hard time with. I'm not very good at it. That's why so. I do this show. I, don't, don't ask me to go to a party, but to do right. this show, this is fun. Right, this right. Is, I love this. Yeah, so, so that was it for me, and so I thought, well, uh, I learned kind of an idea of how to run a net. Why don't I just start one locally? Well, HF's hard to do, but, oh, wait, we have Tech Talk on our repeater that has an Echo Link node, and they have OMs and YLs that will come in, more OMs, that would come in on Tech Talk on Monday nights with our club, where they do all technical stuff, and people bring up technical questions on antennas and all kinds of stuff. Well, why can't we do something similar but less intimidating for women? And they have an Echo Link node. So now I'm not limited to women locally. Women from all over the world can come in and participate and engage and share their experiences and their knowledge. So I approached the club president at the time and I said, I'd like to start a YL net. Uh, who do I need to ask? And is it okay if I use the club repeater and their Echo Link connection? And again, a great supportive uh, OM, Neil, N4FN was uh, club president at the time. He said, Oh, I'm so glad you volunteered. You pick a date, you pick a time, and we'll do it. Yeah. That, that's one of the things about ham radio that, that I learned a long time ago is that if you want to get something done and you're the willing to put in the legwork, the effort, then uh, then somebody's going to probably let you do it. If you want something to be done and you just say, the club should do this, mm -hmm. no one's going to do it. But if you're the one that's going to do it... it now, I, I could see them saying, well, yeah, but you can't use the club repeater because, you know, somebody else might want to use it. To tell, the, to tell you, go ahead and use the repeater in the Echo Link node, well, that was awesome. Well, and, and I thought that was just absolutely wonderful. The club was so supportive. And, again, it, it speaks to, uh, you know, the, the club support of, of hams, regardless. So if you're male, female, young, younger, older, it doesn't matter. The, if you have an interest in amateur radio, that club is there to help you do that in so many aspects and um, so, so you got it started so I got it started I picked a date and I picked a time and so that thought went into that too again I'm analytical so I'm thinking all right now date a day and a time how do I come up with this well the HF nets on Thursdays at 9 again I want to encourage women to be active in every aspect of amateur radio that they want so why don't I kick off the net an hour before the HF net and that way, when we're done on Echo Link, now they can change modes, and if they've got HF capability in their shack, now they can get on HF and talk to possibly more women. But also, they can see the difference in using HF and kind of what that what that looks like. And if some of the women on the Echo Link net are also on the HF net, now it's not all new people. You've got some of the same women now. You can become more comfortable, and it becomes more family-like because you've got the similar people and it's easier to communicate to the same people that you run into over and call over again. Call you know. signs you're already familiar yeah, with. Yeah, you, you get you get to know each other. And so um, so I picked Thursdays at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And then I didn't want to deal with time changes. So it's always on Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So the time shifts when UTC shifts, but Eastern time, it never changes. So yeah. it made it, it made, I wanted to keep it simple. And so, uh, and, uh, and so it runs, uh, runs at that time. My first net, um, I, I let Ann know on the HF net, I was starting an Echo Link net, and I let her know what time. And who's Ann? Ann, and, uh, WB1ARU, who was running the HF net at 9 o'clock on Thursdays. Okay. So, um, 
you know, I mentioned it to her. So you don't have to have a suffix that says YL to participate in this. No, you don't. (laughs) It doesn't hurt, though. Um, And in fact, Dawn was inspired to change her call to YL after we uh, got our vanity calls. So that's, uh, we thought she never changed her call sign. Dawn, okay, there we go. Yeah, you're YL. Uh, So Dawn uh, Dawn changed her call to WA4YL. And uh, so that was that was really cool. Um, so you know, I, I mentioned to Ann on the HF net one night that I was going to start this net, and I told her what day and what time, and that that way anybody any YL that would like to come on the net um, is more than welcome. And she she not only mentioned it on the HF net to the other YLs that could probably hear her, but not me. Uh, and so she also sent an email to a bunch of YL uh, hams that she knew inviting them to the net. And my the first net kicked off uh, October 2nd, 2014, a, about a, a little over a year after I first got my technician license. I'd already upgraded to general in April of 2014. And, um, and we had 14 check-ins that first net. We had two YLs from Australia. Okay, so from all over the world. Yeah, and we had YLs from all over the US as well, so. It's hot in here, isn't it, uh, Millie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, so it was a it was a great first net, and it's been running uh, every Thursday, with the exception of a couple of Christmas weeks where we skipped, and uh, Thanksgiving week uh, where we kind of do a more unofficial net for folks so they can spend Thanksgiving with their family. And how big is it becoming these days? Uh, well, we've grown to uh, anywhere from 18 to 25 and up check-ins, all YLs. In fact, it's a YL net, so we asked the OMs to stand by. And we have a lot of OMs that I know listen um, on my local club, and then we have some around the world that also listen. Uh, GMark has also started linking in to our repeater. We have a YL in Illinois who has her own repeater that she links in to the net. And, of course, we're on the Echo Link Alara conference, so uh, any of the folks on the Sydney Reflector uh, or throughout Australia that tune in can, can listen to the net as well. And anybody could from anywhere in the world. Yes, yes. So... Uh- we have a of course, Australia is you know fl- about twelve hours apart, so it's their morning getting started. Is right, they're, they're late morning, early afternoon yeah. usually. Yeah. And most of Europe, it's the middle of the night, so you might not get get quite so many. Well, you know, it's funny you bring that up. We do have one YL who loves to check in uh, from the UK, Jenny M zero H Z T. She's on just about every week when she doesn't fall asleep, poor thing. <laughs> she, she loves to get on, and her OM loves to listen to the net right along with her. He's very supportive and, and loves the net. So we have her, and in fact, uh, she's encouraged some other while. She's like, look, I can't be the only one that stays up in the middle of the night to get on this net. So we now have uh, a couple of other wilds from the UK who, who, uh, who get on at 1 o'clock in the morning and, and, and spend that time with us. And apparently, because uh, uh, Melanie just, just gave me this, uh, this note here, it is uh, on YouTube. You can listen on YouTube. Yes. So you stream it. Yes, we have a so, YouTube channel. So, so if Echolink just, is not hard to get to, but you do have to have a ham license. Yes, correct. But this is a great tool we found because YouTube... You can share uh, that with other women who may be interested in becoming hams, and they can listen to past recorded nets uh, and kind of get a feel for what they're like. So, again, it's less intimidating. Oh, yeah, all the history is there, too. New. Yeah. And then we have the Facebook group. Now, for the Facebook group, it is a closed group. So all we ask is that you are a licensed YL, a female ham radio operator, and then, you know, we ask you a couple questions, just what your call sign is and, and what... Uh, you know, are you an amateur radio operator to make sure, and then we approve them usually within an hour. Um, so we invite all YLs to, to join the Facebook group. Uh, and then we're also putting together a website um, for, uh, to be a resource stop, basically, for women everywhere to, that have the same questions that we had when we got licensed. What's or, the website? Uh, it's not up yet. We haven't, oh, okay. we haven't uh, published it yet. It's still in the building phase. Um, but the, the idea to having a resource or a clearinghouse is not only from our experiences, but from the experiences of the wilds that we've talked to in the forums. And um, a note on the fact that the Facebook group is, is closed and you must be a, a, a licensed uh, YL is to keep um, a safe space, have something where the wilds feel comfortable to come in share links, share questions, all this other kind of stuff. Um, 
uh, it keeps it more intimate. It's the women that are on this net that want to communicate with each other off the net, and they want to ask each other some you know, questions off air or off net. Uh, the YouTube channel, of course, is open to anybody, and on that channel, the chats, Echolink has a chat, and we also um, graciously borrow um, uh, Norfolk Amateur Radio League's Dew Drop In chat room. They have one that's exclusive to them on the Dew Drop In uh, chat uh, network. And, uh, it's the same one they use at the end of Ham Nation. It is the same one that they use. Uh, Norfolk has their own um, gateway into that uh, into that do drop in chat room, which is wonderful. And one of the things I wanted to comment on that, that Catherine had, had noted was uh, the OMs that listen. We have um, sometimes repeaters have problems or everything. You know, North Fulton is so. North Fulton is so uh, in, uh, into making sure that um, they can get our net out on that repeater. <laughs> and high priority. They, it is a high priority to them. We have a lot of OMs that say, I don't miss a net. Now, it's a wild net. There, it is... Uh, the things that we talk about are universal for ham radio operators. This is simply just a, a, a place where the women can communicate with the women. But the OMs that listen to it are huge fans. They love it. They get a lot out of it. They find it interesting. And I, maybe part of it's because every OM has a YL or XYL or somebody... Uh, in their life, a female in their life, that they can share some of this stuff with, and maybe it helps a little bit in that uh, that uh, you know conversation um, ability, uh, the communication ability uh, between you know male and female hams is to listen in on the wild net to what our questions, what our concerns are, what we talk about, the things that we. Uh, um, the things that we are concerned with and want to know uh, more about, but uh, the yeah the streaming will have the chat rooms on it and it will have the recording of the net on it. Um, OMs love to listen to it; are always welcome to. And with it being on the Alara conference, uh, they can find out more about it, uh, and they're w- welcome to go to the YouTube channel. So. I'm going to listen to it just for a little second. I'll, I'll bump into the middle so we're not uh, at there all you go. the opening stuff. Am I hearing anybody? I hope this was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Um, joining late, actually, mobile driving right now. Um, uh, yeah, I've been on AM. 3885 is the most popular frequency for AM. It's a calling frequency on, on 75 meters. This sounds like hams. Um, if you have a 100-watt radio, um, you'll run 25-watt carrier maximum, but don't fret. Your side bands will be, you know, with 100% modulation, you'll be at um, 100 watts. With the amplifier, yeah, audio sounds pretty good. Um, this means that it sounds like, limit, if sounds like she's on, on a radio. It is 375 yeah, watts. Yeah, she she's mobile. Um, carrier. Um, which, which really is, is a lot of power on AM. Okay, so that's where We're having net- a discussion on AM, and that's uh, Rhea N2RJ, who has uh, got a, quite a nice uh, station up in, uh, in New Jersey and is a pretty avid contester and uh, loves, um, loves all aspects and is not afraid to dive into anything. She's also uh, uh, a mother, and uh, she works full-time, so this is... Uh, this is uh, her hobby, and she plays radio in the hobby just as hard as, uh, as any man does. And we decided we wanted to know a little bit more. Has anybody, we'll pose questions out to the group. Uh, when we want to think, if, if we're interested in something, if, if we want to know more about some aspect of amateur radio, we ask the, the ladies that are out there on the net, we want to know some more about AM radio. Uh, does anybody use AM? Get on AM. Can you share your experiences with us? And and the this is how this net sort of uh, flows and, and becomes its own on that. Um, all right. It, it, one of the things that I listen to on, on nets that I monitor now and then, especially special purpose nets, uh, 
wild nets or youth nets is it is hard to come up with things to talk about that are going to capture people's interest. So how, how do you come up with you know, ways to figure out, keep everybody engaged? That's definitely uh, an ongoing challenge. Um, in fact, Melanie and I, just about every week, have to discuss you know, what, what topic are we going to talk about. So we, we, we look at a variety of things like um, are there any major contests coming up that following weekend? In fact, one of them that we did this with was the North American CUSO party was coming up. And so that Thursday night, we talked about um, a little bit about the rules without getting too in-depth. They can look at the rules on the website. But we gave them an idea of some basics, what the exchange is. And we did demonstration exchanges so that people could understand what they have to exchange. If you have to exchange a serial number, what is it? This is what a serial number is, and how does that work? Which is important because some of these hams have been uh, licensed for 40 plus years. Some have been licensed for four days. So it, you have to approach it where you don't want to dumb anything down. But I think it's it, this group is so tight, even the new ones into it, and the, the ones that have been with it for a while are so welcoming that... It, doing an exchange or explaining things like what is a serial number, this type of thing, uh, everybody loves doing that. It's almost like uh, you know some of the uh, old hands, if you will, at this. They're like the big sister that are going to help you know guide uh, uh, guide the the younger, uh, less experienced hams in this. So yeah, it can be a sample exchange, a great way to do it. Looking at news sources. Now, we don't try to get into... New, anybody can copy news. There's news everywhere. You can look all over the Internet. There's ham news everywhere. We don't need to copy news. We don't need to get into politics or anything like that. But, um, hey, uh, it's a great way to find a topic. There's a new satellite that's just been launched, a new ham satellite that's just been launched. Who out there plays satellite? Can you tell us about it? Share your experiences. What do we need to know? What do we need to do? And uh, having special topics on the net, um, um, Rhea, of course, is, is, uh, enjoys digital, so we had her come on and do you know, 45 minutes or so on digital, um, just on different digital modes and the basics to digital modes and what you needed to do with them. Um, we had Andrea, uh, Andrea K2EZ, which a lot of the VHF, UHF operators out there, they know who Andrea is. She's the rover with the crazy looking uh, SUV with antennas all over it. Uh, oh, I think I met her. Yes, yes. And she did an, a wonderful presentation for us on the net on VHF and UHF operating and helping the YLs know how do I get started if I have an interest in it or why should I be interested in it? How is it different than operating on HF? So we kind of cover the basics and then dig as deep as any of the YLs in the group want to dig. So it's just like doing a ham radio YouTube show. There's an endless number of topics that you can talk to people on and find people who have some expertise like for example you guys on the show. Uh, Don, I was going to ask you um, if you had any mic shy to stuff to get over, or if your first entry to, to actually getting on the air was smooth and easy. Well, at first I was a little nervous, but um, I used to listen to all the uh, repeaters on my scanner, and I learned the lingo before I got on the air. So I got on the air and I talked to it like a duck to water, and. It just came naturally to me. In fact, my friend couldn't believe how well I did on my first try out. But as I was holding the handy talkie, my head was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you, so now you run nets. So, yes. So it, it was, how long until you felt like really comfortable, like say, this, this belongs to me, this is mine, I can do this like anybody else? Five minutes? <laughs> yeah, about five minutes or so, maybe. But uh, I was, it was like I was on the air forever because I was listening to other people on the scanners, and I just got on the, on the, uh, my local repeater every night, and I talked to all my friends every night on the repeater, and as time went on, I got more and more comfortable. And, and you know, thinking about the language I used just then, this is mine. This AM radio, this is mine. Is that the way you guys feel about it now? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Is that your yeah, this is my hobby. Wor absolutely. Working on encouraging other women to feel. No, I, 
it, I'm not an interloper. I'm not hanging off to the side of this. This is mine. Exactly. And and that's that's something that, you know, it's another focus of what this net is about. And in fact, that slip that I showed you, it basically has, it's a kind of a watered down mix of what our preamble is. And that is encouraging women amateur radio operators worldwide to get and stay active, advance their knowledge and skills, share their experiences, and have fun. In other words, own it, ladies. Own it. <laughs> all right. Um, I think we're probably used up about all the time I should take from your ham fest, because that's what you're here <laughs> yeah, for. Yeah, we have antennas to buy, so. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a boyfriend to fight. <laughs> all right. Is there anything else that... that, that has been on the back of your mind that, that we needed to do before we finished up to you know, tell people what, where to find you and things like that. What is this Wild Ops thing? And by the way, the YouTube page, just go to YouTube and look for, and just search Y-L-O-P-S and you'll find the Correct. YouTube stuff on the net. But uh, where, what else is there to find you guys? Or you know, may, Maybe we have uh, just gotten the attention of some other women out there. Not from my regular audience because I look at the YouTube statistics and you know, and it's all old men, and the you know the women's side is like that big. So I'm not going to, for my regular audience, not going to bring a whole lot more people. But hopefully, OMS will say, here, here is a show you might be interested in. I've been talking about this ham radio thing. We, yeah. And and that's just it. That's yeah. one of those things that we run into at Hamfest. Is that how do I get my wife, sister, mother, plug in the female relative, um, friend? Uh, how do I get them? interested well you can't get somebody interested in some something but you can introduce them to it and show this to them as an option hey this might be kind of fun and there are so many aspects to the hobby and if there's something to take away it is that if you want to do it do it if you don't want to do it find what you want to do it's it's just a it's we have a lot of fun on it obviously for the folks out there that are watching this you're interested in ham radio or you are ham radio operators and um you probably know some people you know spread the word ham radio is not dead like i thought wow ham radio is not dead and my dad was a ham but you don't hear about it you don't know it it's not in the forefront as much anymore and there's so many things uh this day now myself and and Catherine are both very open we're good on qrz our call signs have been up there on the screen a lot of times, and we are good on QRZ. Uh, and our email, if you're a member of QRZ, it is on there. Email us. You want some more information, OMs, YLs, um, people that want to know some information, it's on there. If uh, for some reason you are not yet licensed, so therefore you can't mouse over and get that information, our email addresses are our call signs at ARRL.net. So easy so, to find. Easy to find us. Do you guys do YLRL? You're familiar, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but do you, do you participate in that? Uh, yeah, I was uh, formerly District 4 chairman for the YLRL, and uh, it's, it's a legacy organization, and uh, it uh, does have some historical roots. Uh, and what we found, and Melanie and I, uh, Melanie was a great help for me because I couldn't, have, I couldn't have done a lot of the things that that we do now on my own for sure. And uh, so uh, I invited her to come with me to Huntsville a couple of years back when I had just taken on that role uh, to help me set up the booth and run the table. But um, you know, the organization, what they what they encourage you to do is, is they, you know, they encourage you to join, which is great. Uh, and they have a publication that they put out called Wild Harmonics. It's a bi-monthly publication. And but what we found was uh, we were getting a lot of questions outside of uh, about the organization specifically. So we wanted to find a way to provide resources and all of that information to for the OMs for to pass on to their uh, female friends and relatives that uh, might be interested in amateur radio. So there's a lot more that that I wanted to do and that Melanie wanted to do. And so uh, we wanted to reach more people and how do we do that? So we needed more time to do that. So unfortunately that means we have to kind of give up something else to take on something else. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we uh, we're working on a, a lot of those kinds of things with the forums, 
uh, and with the website that we're putting together to help provide all of that information uh, easy to find uh, for OMs and YLs alike with the focus on, again, helping YLs be more comfortable uh, and have find their own place in amateur radio as we have. So, again, also on our QRZ pages uh, is a link to the Facebook group as well as the YouTube channel. So they can go right to the QRZ page and click on those links to find us that way in addition to uh, our email. All right. Um, so, ladies and guys who want to learn more about how this all works, uh, find these guys. Thank you very much. It is, um, Thank you very much. let's see, uh, if I can push all the right buttons here. Oh, for on my side of the table, we've got, uh, on my side of the table, we've got Don, WA4YL. And on the other side of the table, we start with, uh, come on, all the but <laughs> my buttons. Are, my buttons have stopped working. <laughs> oh, my buttons are very late. I think my computer is about to uh, give up. Here. Yeah. If you're on oh, the internet, oh, the, the connection's shaky. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's gonna it's gonna show up in a moment. With the right the right title. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Hold on, right there. Okay, there we go. Catherine, AC4YL. Oh, all right. And uh, and Melanie, AG4YL. I was actually I was pushing the wrong button. That was the problem. And um, switching back to me, and I am Gary Pierce, KN4AQ, but Don still. That's my my, my uh, official uh, co-host. That's from nice. On the, on the same camera. Thank you. Yep. yep. And uh, Ham Radio Now is brought to you by you. If you enjoy these programs and stuff, Ham Radio Now TV is the place to go. And that will be it for this program. You guys have never seen a Ham Radio Now program before, I don't think, at all, right? This is oh, a yeah. new thing to you? Yeah, absolutely. You've seen them before? Mm -hmm. Have you ever made it all the way to the end of one? Most people haven't. Have we? I don't think I have. I don't have. think I've made it to the, all the way to the end of anything. Because yeah. <laughs> the, the end of Ham Radio Now always That's closes the problem. same way. It, it is a three-word phrase. So Dawn is bailing out. I'll have... Dawn's I'll, bailing. I'm bailing yeah. out. I Okay. Here's your bag right here. Um, okay. It always ends the same way. It always ends the same way. It is an old Dick Tracy phrase. It doesn't start with 6, 2, and even, but it, but it finishes with the rest of that part. So I will say the first word, and you guys can do the next two words, and I bet you can figure out what they are. Over. And. Out. <laughs> Dave, Dave would love that. <laughs> but but Dawn had to disappear. She didn't get to play. Aww. 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 Uh, Dawn, as, as you slide back in your chair, yeah. I'll let you do the whole thing all by yourself. Just say over and out. Over and out. Done. All awesome. we need to do. Bye-bye, Facebook. Bye-bye, you. YouTube.